Hi, people, and welcome to another episode in our series uh, where we present uh, LCU 19 speakers. Today, I am delighted to be speaking to Craig Emrick, who attended last November event, LCU 18, as a guest, but now is coming back as a speaker. Welcome, Craig. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm just glad having you. Uh, could you please tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, and how, and how you decided to go ketogenic? Yeah, it, it, many people know my wife Maria, of course, with all of her books and everything. And you know, for a lot of years, I was kind of the guy behind the scenes, uh, keeping the website going. And you know, I have an electrical engineering degree, so I that kind of stuff came easy for me. So I just kind of kept her business going and her blog going and all that. And at, at uh, one point, it finally just made sense for me to pull away and focus on this full time. And so we started doing that. And uh, in the process, I was learning a lot. You know, I was learning from her and her example. You know, she'd been doing this for almost 20 years. Yeah. Uh, it took me about four or five years to come along and really see, you know, what she was doing and seeing her success for, and I would slowly be implementing things, you know, into my life and changes and I'd see the benefits too. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that was hard for me to fully come on board with was something like beer because I brewed my own beer. Oh, and, oh. You know, my, I have a, uh, my grandfather came to the United States from Germany when he was like seven years old. So I had strong, you know, Bavarian roots and that, and uh, that took a little longer to get to, to convert over. But uh, been at least ten years now, totally on board with keto, and then also just diving into biology and understanding why this works and what it is about this lifestyle that is so powerful for for people. Oh. And that is what I've been doing over the last eight to ten years, and. Uh, I, Marie and I co-wrote our book Keto together. Yeah. I did like the first half, she did the second half. So that was kind of my first into actually publishing or writing a book. Yeah, and you, you certainly have a story of your own to, to tell people about. And um, because you had the diagnosis Lyme disease. Yep. And uh, as I understand, the ketogenic diet has been helping you. Yeah. Um, so. That's of interest. Yeah, about five, about six years ago, I started having these this kind of back pain and stiffness and soreness and uh, joint pain, and didn't know what it was. Initially, I thought I, I had a, a back injury when I was in high school, a lower back injury to my disc. So I thought it was something to do with that, you know, just getting worse over time. But then it got worse and worse, and finally, it was like something's not right here, and. I had a, a line test, the standard Western blot line test, which I now know is, you know, up to 70% false negatives. So up to 70% of people who come back negative are really positive. And that's really dangerous because Lyme is pretty easy to treat if you get it right away. When it becomes chronic, it becomes a real nightmare to try to deal with. And so I went another year of symptoms before I finally got the right test done. Uh, and was tested positive but the whole time I was keto and that helped me keep functioning you know I had issues but it, I, you know it was kind of a blessing and a curse because it helped me deal with it where other people maybe wouldn't would have broken down earlier <laughs> uh, but I dealt with it for you know almost six years um, but uh, what I also did is when I got the diagnosis I started looking into it even more and that led me to even more towards basically a carnivore type lifestyle um, because of what I was reading and other people's experiences. Uh, a lot of people with Lyme, they go to keto and they see benefits, good, good benefits, but it's not totally gone. The, the symptoms aren't totally gone. Um, when they go to carnivore, it's like going a whole nother step better. And some of the first people to do this, like Charlene Anderson, she did it because of Lyme disease that she was diagnosed. And 20 years ago, she started carnivore 
and was able to put most of the symptoms into remission and she'd been carnivore for, for 20 years. Mm-hmm. So uh, that kind of led me down this path and we're actually now coming, we're, we're in the middle of writing a carnivore book that's gonna come out uh, right around the time we're gonna be uh, just, actually just before the event. So awesome. we're pretty excited that I also co-wrote that one with Maria as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm sure that your knowledge, because I've heard it also here in Sweden, we have heard a lot about people uh, getting Lyme disease and they don't know what to do. And the, as, you, as you mentioned, that test, that is not that accurate. So yeah. uh, I think uh, your, your story needs to, to be spread. We could spend a whole event talking <laughs> just about Lyme because it's such a, you know, this uh, going all the way to carnivore helps me a lot with the yeah. pain like it gets to, gets me to a point where in the there's this migrating pain that you experience which can be from Lyme but also can be from mold issues which is another issue yeah. that kind of comes along with Lyme a lot of times see Lyme disease it depresses your immune system and so when your de- immune system gets you know chronically depressed over time over years a lot of things that you can normally deal with your body can normally take care of it can't anymore Mm -hmm. so things like heavy metals things like mold you know these type of uh, parasites and these type of things build up in your system and so that just makes you feel worse and worse and you gotta it's kind of like an onion you gotta peel back those layers bit by bit to kind of claw your way back to Mm -hmm. feeling like yourself again yeah um and that's part of the you know journey of chronic Lyme that makes it so hard to deal with and so long you know it takes years to kind of peel all these layers back i've been yeah. treating it for about a year and a half now and got a ways to go yet but yeah the key word course. is patience yes <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand i'm so yeah. glad you're feeling better and it's, that it's helping you so uh, talking about the event uh, you were a guest at lcu 18 what did you think of it it was awesome. You know, we had great weather. Uh, it was, the, the town is really beautiful. We, Marie and I liked walking around, but uh, the event was so, so neat. Uh, I really enjoyed not only the intimate nature of it, where you get to just really get to know everybody mm-hmm. at the event. And I loved how the food was set up as well. How, you know, a lot of times in these you know, settings, you go to a place and you kind of got to do a bunch of research to figure out, okay, where can I get good food? And, you know, I never had to worry about that. And it was really kind of relaxing and like it took, a, it took a lot of that uh, unknown away, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to bother because yeah. we only make them serve us uh, real and proper food, no fake industry process stuff. Yeah, it was really great. The very of mostly a buffet. It's only the Saturday night dinner that is uh, uh, served the three course dinner. You, one can choose and uh, combine uh, everything in a way that suits you. Yep. So now that you're coming back as a speaker, what are your expectations for LCU 19 in November? I'm excited. Um, you know, we had a breakout session for Maria last time. And her and I kind of tag team during it. And it was really great because we got to really interact with everyone. And so I'm looking forward to having more of that, you know, with our own, each, each of us doing that kind of thing and, um, and getting the message out. You know, I'm going to talk, probably going to talk about carnivore more and kind of talk about my experience with that and with Lyme disease and, but also why, you know, this kind of lifestyle going to a carnivore type lifestyle fits our biology well and it and you know it why it kind of works for people like me with chronic conditions or autoimmune conditions uh why it can be helpful so i'm excited to get that message out also yeah and 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 also i want to mention that you and maria of course have a lot of knowledge when to count when it comes to raising kids on (laughs) on keto and low carb or real food and I think that that might interest a lot of uh, people and other guests, maybe at the dinner table sometimes at night, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, we, we adopted our boys when they were one and two years old. Oh. And in Ethiopia, they didn't have the best nutrition. So they were like two, 2% on the growth charts and weight charts. Mm-hmm. So barely registering. 
And we got them home and we just fed them what we ate. And, you know, we give them uh, supplement our son, Kai, at the time with bone broth. And, but we would just puree any food we ate. You know, you take some beef and you puree it into, you know. And that is so common sense. Because I, yeah. if I got two daughters that they are 17 and 27 this year. And if I, if I had the, if they were small babies nowadays or small children, I would never give them those uh, cans with the uh, pureed food that you buy in the grocery store. Never. Yeah. We are so fooled by the yeah, it's just, telling us. Yeah. What's normal these days is just, you know, kind of crazy in that perspective. And, you know, in, in one year of just feeding them what whole foods, what we ate, yeah. they went to 50% on the height and weight charts. And then a year after that, they were about 75% and they stayed there. So yeah. they're thriving on, on this kind of lifestyle. And I, I see your beautiful boys uh, in many pictures uh, regularly, and I can really vouch for that, that they look like they are super healthy and yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, uh, thank you very much for this uh, short chat, uh, Craig. Always a pleasure. And I'm really looking forward to uh, listening to you. I heard a bit uh, last uh, um, event and that made us, yeah, we need to have Craig as well. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So looking forward to meeting both of you because it was great having you last event. So see you in November. Thank you. We can't wait. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.